I want to start by asking you about reports citing international intelligence officials saying that ISIS has trained some at least 400 fighters and has deployed them across Europe to carry out more attacks. Uh, what is your understanding of the imminent threat to Europe right now? Well, what I always advise people is these numbers that you're hearing are only the numbers that the intelligence community actually knows about. I think what's more concerning is that the spectrum of threats continues to grow uh, because we know the people that we know about, but we don't know the people uh, that have went to Syria and Iraq and come back. Uh, altogether, that's probably in the thousands, and then they're training locals. So they're going to these refugee populations, training people, uh, bringing people into the fold, going to the mosques, and you look at places like, like Belgium, France, Germany, Turkey, uh, other parts, those are, those are areas, I think, with high populations that uh, have to be concerned about more attacks in the future. With that in mind, I want to play a little bit of the President's weekly address in which he talked about taking on ISIL and thought this is a part of the puzzle. Here's what he said. As we move forward in this fight, we have to wield another weapon alongside our airstrikes, our military, and our counterterrorism work, and our diplomacy. And that's the power of our example. Our openness to refugees fleeing ISIL's violence. We know that several of the suspects linked to a number of these terror attacks across Europe were posing as Syrian refugees. Are you confident that the U.S. screening and vetting process is uh, foolproof enough that we can move forward with what the president's suggesting? No, I'm not. And that's why the House of Representatives last year uh, asked for a pause in the refugee program. And I want to be clear that I do believe that we need to accept refugees from around the globe, especially uh, from places that are war-torn, uh, that have dictatorships. Uh, we need to be the beacon of light around the globe. But at this point, the Congress has spoken very clearly that we need a pause on this program when you look at refugees that are coming from potential ISIS or Al-Qaeda infested areas, including Iraq and Syria. Uh, however, the Senate uh, will not vote on it. So the Senate Democrats have killed the opportunity to vote on a pause on this refugee program. The longer this refugee program uh, goes unchecked, uh, the longer that we don't take care of uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda, the more that this threat will grow day by day. We have seen here in the U.S. ISIS sympathizers, some who have carried out attacks, some who have been charged with supporting the organization or hoping to get involved with the organization or support it. Um, with that in mind, then, do you think that there are operable cells or lone wolves who've been trained or inspired by ISIS here in the U.S. today? Yeah, so it's, I think it's really important to always to refer to this to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Uh, because a lot of people forget that Al-Qaeda actually carried out a very similar attack in Europe just last year in Paris. ISIS and Al-Qaeda are, are kind of estranged cousins. They're competing, uh, but at the same time they have this, the same goal, which is to attack our allies in the West and, and ourselves. So when you look forward, uh, going forward, it's not just about the people who went to Iraq and Syria and come back. It's not just about the people we don't know about. It's also the capability that ISIS and Al-Qaeda are using over the Internet in encrypted chat rooms that we cannot get into that are radicalizing people here in the United States, what we call self-radicalization. People who were born in Europe, who hold Western passports, that travel over to Iraq and Syria and get trained by either ISIS or Al-Qaeda types, or get radicalized in Europe by ISIS or Al-Qaeda types, they hold Western passports so they can then transit uh, into the United States. And that's uh, what we remain concerned about. It's why the, the FBI director has said that there are uh, investigations going on in 50 states.